Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are trying to get into software development, iOS development, software QA, and other stuff, check out the link in the description tab below. They are offering courses. Um, you can actually live on campus over there. They are hooked up with employers around the country, um, around the, the world really, and they're going to help you try to find your first job in this industry. So uh, make sure you give them a look, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, and the link is in the description tab below. Hey, what's up? Good evening. So I'm making this video because I want to talk about some of the heartache, I guess, that gets displayed on YouTube about being a, a developer and like, I guess people like struggling with it and like, um, you know, quitting or giving up or like talking about like trying to get into the industry and like giving up and things like that. And like, they're making like videos about it and stuff like that. Um, and like, I guess more, I, I'm like, this video is about like people that are talking about like the, the ones that are like struggling in the industry that are like oh i hate my job like they're going to their job like i guess i guess there's people that do this that like hate their job but like i'm not one of them so i guess it, it's difficult for me to relate but i do want to talk about um why it is that i don't hate my job so i guess one of the things i should say is like before i got into the white collar industry one of the last jobs i remember doing was having to army crawl underneath a row house in alexandria Virginia, which is like just south of DC, a uh, very old city. So like the house is like built in like the early 1800s or something like that. Um, and as I'm army crawling down there, um, there's just rats all up in the joint. Like I could see like eyes and stuff. They're scurrying around like to the back corner. I'm like army crawling under there. I'm trying to drag a phone line. And meanwhile, I'm supposed to be a plumber's helper, um, but I'm doing more HVAC work and like this time I'm running a phone line underneath the phone house uh, underneath the house So it's like um, You know army crawling with nothing but a flashlight and all I could do was like take the flashlight and move it around in front of me Army crawl a few steps take the flashlight move around in front of me and like you could only see what you know the light in front of you and like just seeing this dead rat like I mean that was just enough to make me know like This isn't what I want to do for the rest of my life I guess what I'm saying is it, it's all about perspective because if you've been out in the elements when it's freezing cold or and when it's really, really hot, when people are dying because it's so hot, people are outside, like that's when you know like maybe being a programmer is not that bad. So basically we're not being asked to storm the beaches of Normandy here. I mean like we're not even being asked to like do what servers at Denny's do or like what your teachers do at the local elementary school. Um, we get paid a lot of money and our jobs are relatively easy compared to what a lot of other jobs are. I mean, the top tech companies have some of the most comfortable and awesome work environments of any sort of job industry, of, like in the history of humanity, probably. So Google has some crazy office environments. I mean, look at these things. And it's actually like a company standard now where like you get free food, free coffee at a minimum. Whatever you want to do, go ahead and do it. Like if you'd rather be like driving this thing or you'd rather be army crawling under some houses in Alexandria with rats, like it's totally up to you. I mean, I definitely learned some really good things in each one of the jobs that I've done in my life. But being a programmer has been the best job that I've had and I've had many of them to date. So basically a lot of the complaints that like you're distracted by loud office work environments or something like that. It's like, well, you could use headphones. I mean, can you say the same thing for the person who has to like, you know, check somebody out at like the, the Michael's store for crafts, like arts and crafts or something like that. It's like, no, you can't put on headphones and drown out the customer. Most jobs you can't do that with programming. It's like, oh, there's some loud office environment. Just put on headphones. I worked with a guy that was partially deaf uh, because he used to have to work on airplanes and not just airplanes um, helicopters actually for the president so he was in the marine corps and, and, and he had to work on these these helicopters and one of the army's um, and military's biggest injuries is actually uh, tinnitus or you know deaf deaf uh, people going deaf because of loud explosions and, and in his case he's working on engines and things like that uh, I guess my point is that like it could be worse is what I'm saying and, like, there's there's so many worse jobs out there than programming uh, for the people that like watch a youtuber who's like oh i can't go into the office because it's just too much and blah 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 and it's just like you know a 24 year old millennial or something like that uh life could be much worse so we could do comparisons all day like obviously if you if you compare first world problems to third world problems you know it's um, not going to go down that road type of thing and not even going to go down some sort of road where it's like a 24 year old can't have more life experience than um you know 35 year old or something like that that's I'm not saying that that's not possible either. 
Uh, but I will say that like having kids changes the equation. Um, when you have a child or multiple ch children um, that rely on you for obviously clothing, support, food, things like that, um, that changes a lot about the types of things that you're willing to put up with. Um, and, and most cases, uh, I don't know about most cases, but I guess what roughly half of probably, I would say half of the adults out there are probably gonna have kids or something like that. So that's, you know, life, will, life will really hit you, the, you know, uh, hard then I think. So, um, anyway, the, the point is, is that programming is, is a pretty kick-ass job compared to so many other things that, that, we, that we could be doing out there. Uh, and right now there's a gravy train with development in general where, um, the tools are much easier than they were 15 years ago. We're getting paid just as much. Um, we saw really, really high salaries in the late nineties, uh, before the dot com bubble burst. Um, but this isn't really the same thing. Technology changes at a rapid pace. And even with the, uh, threats of, of artificial intelligence and, and things like that, um, and the tools being made easier, the, the, I guess the expanse of, of programming in general, there's just so many different areas, whether you're going to be programming, you know, like engines for that helicopter or working on medical systems or designing games or mobile apps or web apps or like databases, like there's so many different things and those technologies are constantly changing that I don't think that we're going to see like a sudden implosion like we saw with the dot com bubble. Um, so according to like the BLS and that's the Bureau of Labor Statistics in the United States that kind of tracks the, uh, job industries, they're expecting huge gains in uh, the entire STEM field. And, uh, I actually don't, I, I agree with that. And I, I think honestly, sta salaries are going to be pretty stable as well, because some people are going to be like, well, as the technology gets easier or whatever, uh, then obviously the, the salaries would then go down. Um, but that's proven not to be the case. Companies have proven that they can't just send all their workforce overseas and be able to have competitive products. Um, companies are finding that they can't, you know, go cheap on employment and have competitive products. And companies are simply going to continue to pay for the talent that they need in order to separate themselves and stand out from one another. Um, and all business wants to stand out from one another. So, it's not like we're seeing a bunch of overinflated um, dot coms all over the place. I mean, I think we do have some overinflated companies uh, possibly in technology, but technology itself and like I think the demand for engineering is going to be roughly the same as like the medical profession or the legal profession or something like that. Uh, I don't think anybody's making an argument out there that doctors and lawyers are going to be paid less as time goes on. Um, even as online systems that try to provide legal services and things like that, um, for anybody who's ever ever tried those or gone to those, you like you know that like if you're if, like if if I would never want to actually use any sort of online legal service, um, just like I would never want to go to some sort of online doctor if I had cancer or something like that. Um, th there's cer there's certain things that like just aren't going to go away. Engineering itself, um, artificial intelligence, like. Um, unless we're talking about like the singularity or something like our jobs aren't going to go away. And if you are talking about something like the singularity, then uh, I think we have bigger problems to worry about than, than, uh, you know, whether or not we have jobs, I guess, in the IT field. Um, so anyway, guys, that's really all I got. Programming is pretty awesome. I think everybody should go out and do it. I think that if you really don't like it, then don't do it. But, um, definitely don't like follow the advice of some 24 year old programmer or something like that out there. Who's like, Oh, I can't do it. And I gave up programming because of this. And like, I don't know, man, everybody's different. And, um, and as somebody who's had different types of jobs out there and stuff like that, and I've seen other, you know, I have many friends and things like that, obviously I, 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 we all do. Um, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a lot of jobs that are like a ton better than, than being a programmer, at least for a good organization, being a, a, uh, a good, comfortable programmer at a good organization is one of the best jobs you can have. All right, guys, uh, make sure you check out my latest course on this web development in 2019 from start to finish. I keep adding to it. And uh, just recently, I added some uh, new React 101 information in here to try to get everybody up to speed. Um, and, and this course is going to continue to be added upon, but there's, there's tons of information in here. You can see there's 100 lectures already and um, over six hours of content. So it's going to continue to grow. Um, throughout the next uh, several months because I have a whole unit testing thing going in here as well. But um, right now, though, if you guys check that out, just um, let me know. There is a discount in the uh, the description below. If you guys, for some reason, can't afford it, let me know. Uh, talk to me. 
But um, anyway, that, co that course is going to cover a lot because I really use it to create the, um, the website that I have for myself, which is uh, codehawk.com. It actually shows how I created the domain, like bought the domain, set it up on Linode. Um, Linode is the company that I use for um, hosting. So Linode is, is, uh, is, is a really good company uh, to, to use for any sort of hosting. But I, I go ahead and I show how to do all that stuff. Um, and in the process, like I ended up creating a um, open source project. There's actually a couple of them that I'm working, but uh, that I'm working with right now. This first one being bare bones react. And what I want to do is I want to create a command line tool for that. So that's the next thing I want to do. Um, if there's any volunteers out there that actually want to um, help me do a, a con um, you know, push on this so you guys can be like part of the core contributors to this project. Cause what, what it's going to be is it's going to be basically a bare bones tool. It's going to spin up all kinds of different projects for react. So everything from like material, um, materialize things like that, um, or material UI, uh, or, you know, just simply SAS loaders, CSS loaders, less loaders, things like that. So it, it's just going to be a very, very configurable bare bones type of react application, but more of just a configuration tool. Um, that's the purpose behind it mostly. But if you guys want to be a contributor, let me know. Just you need a GitHub account and then you just need to pull down the project, make your changes, push it up and then do a pull request. And I'll go ahead and merge it in the master. And then you guys will be listed as a contributor. And um, again, right now, what I need is like a command line tool. So I was going to do that myself. Uh, but if anybody wanted to volunteer for that, uh, but I'm going to um, showcase that on YouTube, by the way, when I go ahead and create that. But the command line tool, I don't like the way you have to clone the project in order to use it. I want the command line tool to be like an NPM type of install type of thing. Um, similar to, I have another project out there that I've done this on, um, so I know how to do it. But it's just going to be something that, you know, you can NPM install uh, bare bones React um, and then spin something up. So that that's my, that's the next thing. And if you guys are interested, uh, let me know, because like I said, you guys could be like a, a contributor. And also, if you would please uh, please star my uh my GitHub repository and follow me on GitHub as well so we can all uh, connect there as well. All right, guys, have a good day. Take care. Bye.